What's up guys, Headphones Neil here with a quick update preview episode for a review that I'm doing as a final part of this week's um, podcast episode, Headphones Neil Reviews, but as part of something that I want to try and do as an annual review, kind of like my annual Star Wars review. So as a amusement park fan and of a, a particular fan of being of uh, Knott's Berry Farm, I had a recent conversation with a friend who, while we were discussing um, the recent season of Westworld, notably season four, and episode two with the revelation of the Golden Age land, I guess, or maybe what they're going to call like the, what's basically the Great Gatsby land in my opinion, because that's kind of the era that that land is um, mimicking. We got to talking about the ghost town area at Knott's Berry Farm, Frontierland at Disneyland and all of that. Who does it better? Which one we prefer? My friend is more of a fan of Disneyland in those aspects. I'm more of a fan of Knott's Berry Farm in those aspects. Um, and that's, of course, not including um, Galaxy's Edge and being a Star Wars fan. Um, I do think that that land is the better of the lands because it's more true to an um, environment, world, uh, look and feel and all of that. It's more of the and this is going to sound weird but more of the realistically done lands because it encompasses a area that is true to form for what you would experience in that kind of world the like tomorrowland kind of makes sense because it's like the whole thing of the world of tomorrow today so it's kind of like predicting future technology now and what we can expect in the future frontierland i found okay but it's more cartoonified because of the whole Disney thing so from my opinion it's a good land I'm not saying that it's bad but it's more cartoonified than I would want it to be uh, which is why I like Ghost Town and Osberry Farm is because they do they while it, you know it's an amusement park you know it's not real they try and they try try to make it also more of a fun land than a realistic land for how the old west used to be they do that's really the main aspect that they change they actually keep everything else as realistic as possible they make it a proper old west town so you have a saloon a hotel a mayor uh, panning for gold and all that sort of stuff that you would expect in an old west town so we got into that so me and my friend got into that discussion my friend likes uh, frontier land at disneyland for all the reasons that i um, brought up it's one of those things where he actually prefers it because it is kind of cartoonified it's more fun jovial it helps to, uh, keep with the theme of disney to stay young at heart and that sort of stuff so while it's not necessarily a bad thing in my opinion i actually like the like i said i like the nosberry farm version more so over the course of the conversation it turns out we have a day off of work this week so um we got to talking that let's do a compare and contrast. I'm going to go to Knott's Berry Farm, enjoy the park, and kind of see how um, Ghost Town and Knott's Berry Farm would hold up as a Westworld-style town. Uh, my friend is going to go to Disneyland and do the same thing in Frontierland. That how does it hold up like as far as you know, various things, experiences, interactions, and all that sort of stuff. Um, we also, over the course of the discussion, got to thinking about um, the rest of the park and being the accounting and economics nerds that we are, or I guess dorks that we are, um, we got to thinking about the cost of going to the amusement parks, the benefits of those costs versus a park you're going to. And as it turns out, um, um, all things being equal, all, all other things being equal, the, when you add up the cost of admission, the fast lane pass, and parking, the cost of attending both parks is actually really, really close. Knott's Berry Farm actually comes out $4 more expensive than Disneyland, which is something you wouldn't expect. But at $203 for Knott's Berry Farm versus $199 for Disneyland, um, and that's of course, for Disneyland, it's assuming the $104 Ticket price at Knott's Berry Farm, it's assuming the $69.99 ticket price. Um, the variations in pricing would adjust those the $4 variance a little bit. So on certain days, um, Disneyland would be more. On certain days, Knott's Berry Farm would be more. But at the end of the day, for the most part, they're both around the same price of admission. 
Um, we both agreed that um, assuming that there were equal crowds at both parks or no crowds at both parks. So let's assume that you're going on a totally random day. It's not busy at all. You don't have to wait in line. Then Disneyland is actually the better value park at um, rounding to $200 because you get a much bigger park. You get a lot more stuff to visit and see a lot more things to do versus Nosberry Farm. But on the flip side, and because it's not necessarily a regular occurrence that you're going to get no crowds or minimal crowds, assuming a regular um, or, on, or on average equal amounts of crowds, you know, you're going to wait 45 minutes to an hour at least per ride. You're going to wait in line for food and stuff. That's where the value of Knott's Berry Farm shines because it is a smaller park. It's easier to get around to the various areas and things like that. They have fewer rides, but also a lot, they have a, a lot of smaller attractions to visit as well. It's easier to get through the park on a single day than it would be at Disneyland. And that's, of course, assuming, you know, all the rides are working without issue. You're not waiting two hours in line, you know, for Ghost Rider and Accelerator and hang time and all that, because now you're spending all day just waiting in lines for a few rides. But, you know, assuming you're waiting an hour or so per ride, uh, to get into all the big rides, you're still spending a good half of the day to ride those rides. But it is easier to get through all of those rides, or at least the major rides that you would want to get through. So you do would have to uh, weigh some um, benefits for, of going on various rides. So, you know, the log ride versus... Um, the Calico or whatever the Bigfoot Rapids rename was, the Calico Water Ride, whatever that, the, whatever they renamed that raft ride to. So, um, if you wanted to go on a water ride, you would have to probably make a decision between the two because the wait times for both would be long. Um, you can go on Ghost Rider, and I, the line for Pony Express, if my memory serves, is actually pretty short. So, um, that's actually one of the easier rides to get to. But on the flip side, the line for rides like uh, Jaguar uh, can be pretty long, but the ride is also longer. So um, that weight is kind of the harder one. But it is actually a little bit easier if the AC is on in the uh, queue because that line is actually indoors, so you're not standing out in the sun. On the flip side, the accelerator line is long, but it's also a fast ride. So if you're the line queue can be daunting because if you're waiting in two hours waiting you know two hours in line for a ride that lasts about you know 30 to seconds to a minute that is kind of um hard on your mind to uh, get your mind around but it is a quick ride so you know the line i suspect should move pretty quickly um but all that being said nosberry farm shines in those areas because um, there are fewer rides. It's easier to get around the park, so you're not you don't have to worry about like well, on the flip side for me in Disneyland, you know, getting from Space Mountain to um, Splash Mountain is a very long walk. So you are also spending a lot of time walking around the park um, to get and also to get to areas like um, Matterhorn the Matterhorn ride uh, to Galaxy's Edge, which is at the back of the park versus. To get around the train around the park, you have to go to the front of the park. So for me, Knott's Berry Farm in those aspects is a better value. So what my friend and I decided to do is I'm going to go to Knott's Berry Farm and um, ride the rides, um, check out the various areas and things like that, see how Ghost Town holds up as a Westworld style town, see how the Rory, Roaring Twenties holds up as a area to compare against Westworld's um, new town. My friend is going to do the same thing, so he's going to spend time at uh, Frontierland, see how that holds up, uh, spend time at the... Um, it's kind of a mix at Disneyland as far as the um, entry to the park, because that's the main area that's kind of like the Roaring Twenties and old style, like Americana, um, the New Orleans area, or New Orleans Square, which is also kind of like that um uh, period or era so but luckily all of that stuff is in the same area of the park um he is gonna and then he of course we're all still gonna spend time in the rest of the park from my understanding at uh Knott's Berry farm fiesta certain areas of fiesta village are shut down for renovation through 2023 uh Montezuma, montezuma's revenge is down or closed for uh renovations and upgrades but for the most far as i know the rides like hang time are 
running accelerator i think they just finished its repaint and all that so we'll see about riding that but as far as i know that ride is open same thing with ghost riders open pony express so for the most part the park is open so the idea is to compare the two parks and see how the uh, couple of lands compared to westworld which one would hold up better biases aside but because we have our own strengths and preferences in each world we're going to go to those particular lands to check them out and then we're also going to do a cost benefit analysis of both parks to see how they um how the value is of going to those parks for that time frame how is the lines um, getting around the park um, and things like that one of the benefits of disneyland that i will say is they do have a lot more areas with shade and trees and sitting and like basically protecting yourself from the sun what that um Northberry Farm doesn't. So when we're when you're at the park, it is you do have to find you know places indoors to sit. I think there are a couple of random places if you're eating at a restaurant, waiting in line of queue. Like I said at Jaguar, I think um, the part of the queue for a Ghost Rider is covered up, but it's still kind of like a, kind of like the, a saloon with doors and windows and stuff. So that's about the best ventilation you're gonna get there. Um, so things like that, like how to which park um does a better job of um uh, entertaining the guests seeing as how the price of getting into the parks is basically equal and the main other differentiation between the parks is their size so g size aside uh, we're gonna see also things like um how much are we able to get through throughout the day um how are the lines how's the customer service and things various other points of no like that so um i'll have that review as part of that as uh, next week's review to compare and contrast compare things to westworld and have things hold up there and um well, because it's summer i don't expect to take a lot of videos uh like i've done in the past couple of reviews that i did over the past couple of years but um i'm still going to aim to do that because it's summer and i expect the crowds to be bigger um, going into this year's review, I don't expect to be able to do that for this particular review. Um, but I will still take enough pictures where I can of point of view shots of, you know, Ghost Town, the Roaring Twenties, um, and things like that. So the default thing of, you know, riding the rise, having a churro, uh, visiting the Calico Saloon, and things like that are, of course, given because, for example, at the Calico Saloon, I've had the boysenberry pale ale beer, I think, and then the boysenberry cream soda. So whatever the new thing is this year, I'm going to aim to try that, whether it is a beer or just a soda. I think I was watching, I forget which video I was watching on YouTube where there's, I guess there's a new soda to try, so I may try that. Um, but if there's a alcoholic version, I may also try that. So we'll see when I get there, but that's the goal there. Um, as far as the new things to try, um, there's supposedly a new pizza shop that opened in the boardwalk area near the, I think it's the Walter Knott Theater, so maybe grab some lunch there um, to see how it looks. Based on the videos I've seen so far, it seems like it integrates well within the area, and they made it themed very well, so to, I'm aiming to check that out. Um, and then the stuff that I mentioned with the Roaring Twenties and comparing the area to that and the Ghost Town stuff with Westworld. So those are kind of the comparisons I aim to make for this year's reviews. So um, with that being said, that's really the bulk of this review. So um, if I do take videos, then I'll have a playlist set up on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pateln01. This will be the header video kind of as my uh, prequel setup. Um like the um essentially just the guessing of what i like basically the setup of the a podcast of what i expect to be able to do at the park and then i'll have if i take videos and i'll have those videos throughout the like outlining the stuff i do throughout the day and then i'll have a closing video to um kind of summarize the day summarize how things held up as far as the comparisons i want to make that cost benefit analysis i'll get that report from my friend as far as what he thought about everything at disneyland um i'm still trying to get him to do a video with me to have kind of a live um two-fold review or basically have that compare and contrast live at the same time rather than me relaying what he said but that's proving a little bit difficult so 
Um, if that doesn't work out, I'll get the summary of um, his experience, compare it to my experience, and see how it goes, um, and take it from there. Um, so that's really all there is for this particular review. So look out for hopefully some more videos at least on um, my, the, basically outlining my day at the park, you know, just point of view shots through the ghost town area, the Roaring Twenties area. Um, I may do some videos of Fiesta Village, but if there's a lot of walls and stuff up, then I may not do that particular area. Uh, maybe check out some of the gardens that they have set up like um, at the Bigfoot Rapids area at, the, at that area of the park. Um, some of the waterfall and park point of view shots, um, in Snoopy's, the Snoopy area, the Camp Snoopy area. And yes, I keep forgetting what the new, I think it's Calico River Rapids maybe is a new name of Bigfoot Rapids, but growing up with calling it Bigfoot Rapids, that's, uh, what I have stuck in my brain. So maybe at some point I'll have it remembered, but still that's kind of the right, you know, the right at the back in the, um, tubular raft thingies. So, um. Look out for, uh, so it'll be at least this review and that final review for sure, but um, I'm aiming to take videos throughout the day as well. So I may try to try again to do the filtered videos like I did last time um, walking through, you know, Ghost Town with a black and white filter on um, to see how that goes. And then, you know, a vibrant or maybe a pastel -y filter with go walking through the Roaring Twenties area to get that frame of mind. Um, I know last time uh, when I did that last year, um, there was, so all of the videos are, were recorded from my smartphone, but this was prior to an update to fix the heating issues or overheating issues while using the camera and all of that and the basically operating system environment. So recording a video for a couple of minutes or even a minute to five minutes would make the phone really hot, which I don't know why it was doing that, but it was a known problem since then. As far as I know, they fixed that issue. So I should be able to um, take, you know, those videos to in the, with those filters through the park. I think uh, the videos cut out after like three or four minutes because they were getting, the phone was getting so hot. So Obviously the camera or the phone has an auto shut off thing as far as closing the camera and stopping the video recording when the phone gets too hot. So the idea is to walk through, do a similar thing this year, you know, walk through the park or walk through each land. So do ghost town in black and white. I think I can get through the area in about four to five minutes. Um, and this is a side note as more of a technical limitation, but I can record videos at four k 60 frames per second or up to even 120 frames per second 120 frames per second not 128 but it limits video recording to i think five minutes but testing it before uh, a couple of months ago i think it e they've changed that so it expands it based on the um capacity of the or how the um, phone is recording so if you store it in like the high efficiency format then it can do longer videos so I'm probably going to do that, so it might actually just be a file size limit rather than a system's limitation. So I'm going to give that a shot, see how um, that all holds up. And um, assuming that the phone does not overheat every time or start overheating every time I try to record a video, then um, I'll rearrange how I do things when I get there. But that's the plan. Just as a side thing to try that again to see if it works a little bit better. Um, I'll actually check the weather right now, see how it's going to be for the upcoming few days. But um, essentially, that's the plan. I think it's going to be a, another warm week. So that's going to be the um, hard part about it. Um, so looking at it right now, it looks like the high is going to be 82, low of 63, partly cloudy. So that actually might help a little bit. I think last time it was... I want to say it was in the high 80s to maybe low 90s and it was definitely sunny so it was actually really really hot um so that's of course assuming that the clouds stay for the bulk of the day um um i actually was going to check the hourly forecast but i'll also check the hourly forecast on the day to see how it goes but essentially if it's cloudy and 80 it should be okay it'll still be a warm day but I want to try and take those videos again for a more seamless uh, walkthrough of the of each park um, to 
get those videos and have a single video for Ghost Town, a single video for the Roaring Twenties and the Boardwalk, um, maybe a quick video in the various gardens and things like that just to have those videos, um, like individual videos that are seamless without ha breaking it up into multiple parts. So that's all there is for this particular update. So um, to round it out, if you're a patron, you got this video over the weekend, whether you saw it on July 9th or 10th, but the video was released early for patrons at patreon.com slash Patel N01. Um, if I didn't mention it, I'm planning on being at the park on Wednesday, July 13th. So if you're in the park at on that day, then definitely look me or look out for me. I'll most likely be, have or be walking around with a black backpack with orange accents. So if you want to hang out, say hi, then definitely stop me and we can ride the rides, hang out, do whatever, um, and you know talk about this and that or whatever you want while we're there. Um, um, and if you want to subscribe to the podcast of course the website is headphones neil dot reviews uh the what the youtube channel is youtube.com slash patel n01 where i should have the videos up um uploaded i'll aim to upload them throughout the day so that um they're ready for me by the time i get home but at the very least or at the very latest i'll upload them as soon as i get home and then um have them pu um published and publicly ready by Thursday the 14th, depending on how many videos I take. Um, and then I'll have the review available for everybody at the same time on the 14th, um, on July 14th, so that you guys can get my review of what I, or how the day went and my review for all the stuff that I covered in this video and what I was able to finish, what I was not able to finish and all of that stuff. So like I said, this video is available for patrons and at patreon.com slash patel and zero one and if you are a patron as well you would have gotten the early preview of this information at the end of the podcast for a week ending july 8th 2022 so by subscribing you get benefits like that um you know inf information news in the alpha and beta stages of upcoming content things going on and stuff like that um, but at the very least, you can also uh, follow me and comment and provide your feedback and things like that on Twitter um, by finding my account at PatelN01. But thanks for tuning in. And of course, all the, the important links will be available in the show notes um, on the YouTube channel where this video is uploaded. And also, if you're a patron, the links will be there as well with an outline of some of the things I mentioned in this video. So thanks for tuning in, and um, if you're already a supporter, thank you in advance. If you haven't subscribed to the show and, or the channel or the podcast and are thinking about it, I thank you if you if this helps um, you make that decision to subscribe, whether you subscribe to the podcast um, in your podcast client of choice, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Twitter, however you want to get my updates, any one or all of them is very much appreciated. So thanks for tuning into this particular review and preview of my upcoming Nosberry farm trip and see you there or and of course with my review after my trip. So uh, thanks for tuning in and until the next video.